However, when you look at the 22nd of August, it is always a day of glory. It is the queenship of the Mother of God. How can it not be glorious? But in the Church of Nigay the Gupad, it is the sixth anniversary of the coronation of the image of Mary, Hub of Christians. And uh, again, we do the tradition of translation. The Virgin of Palapad comes down to the Gupad in order to celebrate the queenship of the Mother of God or over all of us. Added to the glory of the queenship of Mary, added to the coronation of Mary, Hub of Christians, we have two sons of Mary, Hub of Christians, receiving ordination to the priesthood this morning. As I said, from all looks, this is a day of glory. But let me look at the other way. Let me look at the opposite of glory, the opposite of queenship, the opposite of a happy, beautiful memory. And what is that? Defeat, failure, stumbling. Today, Jed and F receive ordination. Will they be good priests? I don't know. Will they fail the Lord? I am very sure. I am very sure that the Lord knows that these priests, Jed and F, will fail him someday in the future. But even then, the Lord whispers to both of them, I know you will fail me, but I have chosen you and I have set you apart. And not even your failures can change my heart from loving you. That is the mystery of God's love for you. It is still a moment of glory. But then I return to the other side of this celebration. What makes priests stumble? What makes, makes priests fall? What makes priests leave the church, sometimes even leave God? What causes this? M. Ejed, I will venture some answers from an elder in the priesthood. The first reason why priests fail is priests forget. They forget who they are. They forget boundaries. They forget the sublimity of their vocation. They forget what they have been through and how the Lord has provided. And then, after forgetting, they embrace the opposite of God. To forget is a big crime. That is why the Lord, in the book of Revelation, accused the churches in Asia, you have forgotten your first love. Do not forget your first love. Do not forget your ordination. Do not forget how much God loves you. And do not forget that even if the Lord knows you will fail him, he still called you and you have, you have been set aside and chosen apart from so many. To forget leads to death. The second reason why priests fall is that they find the priesthood enjoyable. It is not prohibited for you to be happy priests. In fact, they should be happy. But the priesthood is for joy, not for enjoyment. Joy is a gift from the Spirit. Enjoyment is a fruit of the senses. Joy is a fruit of spirituality. Enjoyment is a byproduct of sensuality. The priesthood is not for enjoyment. Because when the Lord called you, come follow me, he said to you, come die with me.
And the choice to follow the Lord in priesthood is a choice for the crucifixion. We have pounded on you in the years of theology. Fight entitlement. Fight the privileged status of the priesthood. Fight it. Because the day you feel entitled to privileges, the day you start enjoying the benefits of ordination, is the day you slide down. Forgetfulness and enjoyment of the priesthood. The third reason why priests fail is that they get themselves distant from the Lord. They get themselves absent in the Lord. You notice that being absent-minded, being absent-hearted, being absent spirit, sometimes even, even being absent in body, that we lock ourselves into our rooms and we go only, only go out for liturgy. We only go out to be functional. But you were not called to be functional. You are called to be the presence of God among His people. Then, you understand that being absent-minded does not come with age. Being absent-minded comes with mediocrity. When we have forgotten the Lord, when we have enjoyed the priesthood, then we also become absent ministers, absent pastors, distant from God's people. We cannot smell like the sheep anymore. F.A.J., look at the three problems. Look at the three reasons. Forgetfulness, enjoyment, and distance and absence. If you don't like to fail because of these, then the opposite is your assurance of fervor. And what is the assurance of fervor? What is the opposite of forgetfulness? Remember. What is the opposite of forgetfulness and amnesia? Memory. Is it not what we celebrate every day? The memory of God? The memory of our sins? But also the memory of God's mercy? If you ask the Lord to keep you in His memory, the Lord will also keep your memory alive and your fire will be glowing until the end of your days. The antidote to forgetfulness is to live the memory of the Eucharist day by day. Enjoyment. What is the opposite of enjoyment? But sacrifice. And isn't the Eucharist sacrifice? That is why we kneel. That is why we fast. That is why we sacrifice. Because the Eucharist is a celebration of Calvary. If you find the priesthood enjoyment, just look at the sacrifice of Jesus and every Eucharist you will celebrate. And then you will be humiliated. You will be confronted that the priesthood is not for enjoyment. The priesthood is not for pleasure. The, priest, the priesthood is not for self-gain. But the priesthood is dying every day for the Lord. The third reason, absence and distance. And what is the Eucharist? The Eucharist is presence, real presence, not just symbolic presence, not just token presence, but real presence. And that is the challenge for you. You're going to make Christ present in the Eucharist and present in the tabernacle. But be, be present to God's people. Be present to God all the time. And never allow yourself to be separated from Him. If you want to fail, I am giving you the formula. Forget Him. Enjoy life. Be distant and absent. And then you railroad yourself to failure. But if you want to keep your fervor, if you want to be fervent all the time, if you want to be unfiled and excited all the time, no matter how disappointed, frustrated, aged, sickly you may be, look at the Eucharist. It is memory, it is sacrifice, it is presence. You are at the, cross, you are at the crossroad of your life. 
You can choose to forget. You can choose to remember. You can choose to enjoy. You can choose to carry the cross. You can choose to be distant and absent. But you can always choose to be present all the time. Jen and Eb, destiny has brought us together in this priesthood. It is not your planning, not by signing, but God's will. God's will is that we meet together and that I impart to you the gift of the priesthood. Jed and Eb, I have seen you grow in the seminary all these years. We have many more years to grow old together serving the Lord. My only request as an elder brother in this vocation, keep on remembering, keep on sacrificing, keep on being present all the time as Jesus is always present to you. And if there should come a time when you're tempted to forget, if there should come a time when the enjoyment becomes irresistible, if there should come a time when you will just lock yourself away and be distant from God and God's people. If there should come a time, ask the Lord to tap you. Ask the Lord to pierce your heart. Ask the Lord to disturb you and trouble you. And it bring you back to the path of righteousness. Jed and we will grow old serving the Lord. And I pray that in the sunset of your life, when you see the eternal priesthood in the gates of heaven, the same priest you serve so lovingly here on earth will be the same priest in heaven who will say to you, Welcome, good and faithful priest servant. Enter your everlasting reward.